Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be checking out all of the recent Nautica teasers posted in the Badgeot Discord server from pictures to full on showcase videos. So first up we'll start with the teaser all of us were excited about when it first got sent, the Nautica gameplay showcase. The first thing we can see here is this really nice picture of a bridge. I'm not sure what boat this is and I don't even know if it's been teased yet. But as you can see it's a really nice picture so I have high hopes of the interiors in the actual game. Another thing we can see here is these loading screen tips which might remind you of the ones that were originally in DSS3 as well as this purple and pink loading screen bar which is really nice. Now, as the loading screen fades away, we can see this really nice view of the Marco 125 in a dry dock, as well as a small village behind it. This dry dock feature is something I'm really excited about, as it's never really been seen before in a boating game as far as I'm aware. After a second, there's this small menu screen that appears with a very nice transition onto the screen. The menu features a play button, which is pretty self-explanatory, a jobs button, which we don't see in this video sadly, a shipyard button, which will be shown a little later in the video, a trade feature which will be really interesting to see in the future, a shop where I'm guessing you can buy currency and game passes if there are any, settings which are also shown later, and an info button. Here I'll turn my audio off because the video has some audio itself. This is the information screen which features, well, information such as credits, an update log, player stats which currently isn't finished and some server information. Here you can see all the really cool people who help work on this game. Next up, moving into the settings, we can see some really cool features in this menu. First up is the AI ships option, which I'm guessing is a switch to turn AI ships appearing on and off. The idea of AI controlled vessels is something that I think will be really cool to see in the game. Just below that is a button to enable or disable distant buildings, which will probably hide buildings that are far away to help with performance. The same can be said for the one below it, which will also just hide the trees that are far away, again to help performance. Below that, there's an option to enable or disable PvP, which is a feature many of us are excited to see in Nautica. There seems to be just an on or off option, and it seems that you can't really choose what type of PvP you want to take part in like in DSS3. And finally, at the bottom of this list, there's crew invites. This is likely the button which will stop or allow crew invites coming through, and I say likely because we know nothing about how anything will work yet and the game is only in pre-alpha as of now. However, if crews are how I think they'll work, as in multiple people working on one boat, I think it'll be really fun to be able to work with your friends. Okay, moving to the middle of the settings, we can see this really interesting slider here where you can choose which difficulty you play on. There's Advanced, Normal, and Arcade. Starting off with Advanced, there's a description of the difficulty below it which says that most operations will be manual, as in what you'll have to actually do on the boat such as deploying fishing nets or any other tasks that might be in the game. Also, something which is quite interesting is the income multiplier shown here. You'll earn 15% more income if you play on advance, which is something that makes playing on this difficulty worth it besides the really cool manual operations. Next up, normal difficulty. This is the standard in-between option of the three difficulties available. On this difficulty setting, most operations will be manual, as in dropping nets I mentioned earlier. This is apparently the way the game is meant to be played, and there are no income modifiers, which means you'll earn the normal amount when selling cargo. And finally, arcade difficulty. This makes the game the easiest of the three options available, and most operations will be automatic so you won't have to do much. However, playing on this difficulty cuts 15% of your normal income off, meaning you'll actually earn less money when using this difficulty. This is also similar to how DSS3 is. Also, these settings will affect how easy the boat is to manoeuvre and sail. Moving on from difficulty, we have another performance based setting, which is wave refresh rate. I'm guessing this affects how smooth the waves are, which will make a huge impact on the performance if you're on a lower end device. And below that, there's a nice option to choose which menu music plays. There's the choice between Solent, Atlantis and Humber I'm guessing, as those are the only three songs we know about as of now. Maybe there will be more options when the game comes out, who knows. Ok, back up to the top again, this time looking at some more basic settings. These two settings here are purely based on personal preference of what you want to see or not. Names above islands will probably toggle the island name appearing, whether the island name appears from all distances or just when nearby we don't know, but it could relate to this image somehow. 
As for names above boats, this could either toggle the name of the person sailing it or the name of the boat. Again, I'm not sure how far you have to be for them to appear, but this will be useful if you want to clear up your screen a bit. Well, that's all the settings we've seen so far. Let's move on to the most exciting part of the teaser, the shipyard. We're first shown this cool animation of the boat rising out of the shipyard to allow for easier viewing, and when this is complete, we're greeted with tons of customization options. We'll start on the left and move our way around. Here, we can see the name of the boat model and a type name here button, which will probably be the name of your ship. There's also a button which seems to be a choice of where your boat was registered, and I'm guessing there'll be every port in the game to choose from here. Below that, we can see some stats of the boat's turn rate, efficiency, and top speed. Turn rate is how easy the ship is to turn, but I have no idea what the efficiency could mean. Maybe how efficient it is at making money? Anyway, as for top speed, that's just how fast the boat can go in knots. And finally, at the bottom of this screen, we can see who made the boat, and you can see Jorbunga made this one. Moving on, probably the most exciting part of the shipyard is the interchangeable boat parts. Here you can see many options of all the parts of the boat that can be swapped out. How you can get these parts is unknown. Here you can see Jordan changing the mass type, and on the right there's some stats. Maybe the parts you choose will affect your boat's performance in some way. As he changes the bridge to the Hansen Bridge, you can see it says unowned, which might mean some parts might have to be bought or possibly even found, which would be pretty cool. Here you can see him changing the crane of the boat, which could impact the efficiency of catching crabs. Now you can see him choosing whether he has a dock thruster or not. Not having one could disable the ability to use these thrusters like in DSS3. Before we move on to the repainting part, cargo, which wasn't mentioned, could possibly be changing the crab pots, fishing nets, or the other way of acquiring cargo, which could improve the efficiency of earning money. As for the propeller, this could most likely be a sort of engine upgrade, increasing your top speed. Now, moving on to something we're familiar with, but still includes some new features, is the repainting. Here we can see Jordan repainting his boat using the colour wheel and slider we've all seen before in DSS3. However, a new option is changing the material of the selected part, which I'm sure people will use to their advantage. Also, you can see that instead of being limited to a small number of parts we can change like in DSS3, we can choose from a huge amount of parts on the boat to change the colour of. Now Jordan has finished customising, let's move on to the next part. As you can see here, we have the choice to either set sail or just walk around, which he shows but then resets to set sail. When he clicks set sail, the menu disappears and then the dry dock slowly fills up with water, then followed by the gates opening. This is a really cool way of setting sail and beats DSS3's spawning system by a mile. After the animation is finished, we get a smooth transition between the menu and actually sailing. You can hear a very nice engine sound coming from the boat. Here is the bridge of the Marco 125. This is expected to change before release as Joe Bunga said, however it still looks pretty good as of now. Also you might have noticed the interior wasn't visible through the windows before it went into first person and this is to help with performance to allow mobile players to play as well. Once he's left the dry dock completely, you can see the brand new sailing GUI appear, which features four main things. One is speed, which is the lever icon and the green bar. One is fuel, which is the petrol pump icon and the orange bar. One is presumably damage to the engine or the boat as a whole, which is the engine icon. 
and in the middle we can see the speed of the boat in knots. As you just heard, this part of the clip shows us that we'll have more access to how long the horn is sounded, which I think is pretty cool. As he sails further from the port, you can see the feature everyone is excited to see in Nautica, the waves. These are only placeholders and won't look like this on release, as well as mostly everything probably, but they still look amazing and realistic. Here, as he jumps out of the captain's seat, we can see an E to drive button, which will be so much better as without it, sometimes you accidentally go into a seat you don't want to. Some ships in DSS3 have this as well. There's also an E to pick up more inline button here as well, which was shown off in a previous teaser. This will probably be where you can tie up your boat and also tow other ships. As Jordan jumps into the water, we can see a new oxygen meter, which will replace the losing health thing in DSS3. Personally, I think this is much more realistic. As he swims around a bit more, you can see the oxygen meter decreasing and the screen also slowly fades into black. When this oxygen runs out, I'm guessing the screen will be pitch black and you will eventually drown. There, as you might have noticed, is a new animation for climbing out of the water, which might not seem like much, but is a great detail to have. Well, that's everything for that amazing teaser. Now, let's move on to some smaller teasers, which are just as important. As I mentioned earlier, the Marco 125 is getting a full revamp before release, and this is a picture of a boat's bridge, which might be the Harris Explorers. Speaking of, this is the most recent image we got of the Harris Explorer. It looks great so far. Next up is an old version of the actual waves in Nautica. Who knows if they look anything like this now, but they're still cool to see anyway. As you can see, they look incredible, and I can only imagine what they'll look like on release. Next up, less of a sailing teaser, but still a good one, is football. Yeah, you're going to be able to play football in Nautica, or soccer if you're American. This is quite a funny feature to see in Nautica, and I'm surely going to be playing some games against my mates in the future. Well, that's all the recent Nautica teasers we've seen so far. I hope you all enjoyed this video, thank you so much for watching, and have a good one.